This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact. No one makes it easier to create interactive content that drives engagement from your customers than Constant Contact. Unlike other solutions, Constant Contact has a smooth drag and drop design, which provides the most simplified editing experience possible. And if you want to talk strategy with a marketing expert, you can turn to Constant Contact's free live coaching for help. See how you can be a marketer with a free trial at constantcontact.com slash podcast. All right, Mark, what a gift to have you back on the show again. Welcome. Thank you. What a gift to be on the show again. I can't tell you how awesome it is to be on the Ziggler show with you guys and just to dive into some great, great, great content. Well, it is. And you know, we're, uh, I'm about family. Everybody who's listening here knows that that's such a big part of Ziggler and uh, a part of me as the host here. And Tom and I spend so much time talking about family, but I want to get in on that because you're talking very plainly, very straightforward and with, with a, a lot of gravity uh, in regards to family. I really want to break it down and, and kind of get things out on the table to the reality of how I know the things that I deal with in my own life uh, with family. And I think a lot of other people too do as well. So with family, I mean, what's the point? Let's get it on the table. Who has, I was thinking about this, Mark, as I was looking through the seven day challenge and I thought, gosh, who has ever really gone into having kids, starting a family with any specific intention and a goal? I mean, my experience is 99% of everyone, no matter race, religion comes together in a physical encounter, whether married or not at the time. And boom, we have a child, we have a family, boom, we're off to the races. Maybe there was a desire and a decision to have a child. Some do, uh, some, it just happened. Either way, how many people had a long-term vision and a goal ever, ever contemplated that for their family? I sure didn't, and I don't know if I've ever met really anyone who has. I wanted to ask your experience right off the bat with just there, right there. Oh, I'll tell you, I can, I can speak to that because I've had the chance to coach lots of families. I've had the chance to talk to lots of families. I've had the chance to interview. I've had the chance to survey. And we're up to about 4,000 families that we've interacted with, okay? So are you ready for this? 98.5% of the families that we've talked to say that the number one thing, the number one thing in their life next to their faith is their family. However, we follow that up and we ask a simple question. How many of you have one single, one single written down goal specific to your family and less than 10% of them can keep their hand up? Now, go a step further. We work for companies, businesses that have mission statements. Zig Ziglar has a mission statement. Ziglar Family has a mission statement. I, I, whoever is out there listening, you probably know your company's mission statement. When I ask if these families have a mission statement, a purpose statement, less than 1% of them can raise their hand. Yet we say it's the most important thing in our life next to our faith, but yet we can't function in business and in our world without some goals, without a mission statement, without knowing where we're going. Mr. Ziggler used to talk about, you know, how you can't hit a target you don't have. And that's the reality of today's family. We love our family. We're crazy about our family. They're the most important thing in our life. We're just not acting on that. Okay. Well, and as I, I let people know, this is a conversation because this is a big topic that hits home to all of us. And when you talk about that, Mark, it has become apparent and we've had folks respond because in a, in a show, I don't know, maybe 30 days ago or so, I mentioned that I was doing some counseling, marital counseling with my wife that I, we've done that in the past. And we're, we're any, anytime we hit something, we're not overcoming. Well, we get in and get some help. And as I looked at it this time, I had to admit that as much effort, have I put effort in my family? Huge. Have I put effort into my marriage and, 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 and everywhere? Yes, effort. But as far as day-to-day -day intentionality with a plan, with a goal, I have done that in my work. I've done that in my health and wellness. I've done it in my faith. And that's probably, unfortunately, the order of priority I've given it. I've done it in my parenting 
to a pretty good degree, my marriage is probably the place that has suffered the most. And we're, we're looking at that right now. But now you're taking, in a sense, I think, parenting and, and marriage and, and looking at the family. If I say my family, what are my goals for my family? That's different, it feels like, even than my parenting structure and strategy to look at my vision for my family. And, and I talked to in our last show that we did together, I, I told, I think some of the same things that, gosh, it really put this on the table again, to look at. And again, do you find that, that that is, is that, I wonder if that's a significant or a, a pretty stereotypical, uh, you know, work comes first for a lot of people, you know, business, maybe health and wellness, then maybe faith and then parenting and marriage and the, and the family comes last even though we say it's the most important it comes last uh, how do you turn the tables all right so <laughs> you kind of set me up here uh can i think we, i think what you're asking is to get very real and very raw here right so having coached enough families now through this whole process i can get very real and tell you that Without a doubt, when I begin talking to a family and we have that initial call, that initial get to know each other, you know, it's no different than meeting in the grocery store or that you're, you're saying hi at church. And you say, how's the family? Everybody says the same thing. You know what that is? Great. Good. You know, oh, we're doing well. We're doing, you know, whatever they say. But when you peel that onion back just a couple layers, just a couple layers, here's what I'm going to tell you. Every single family out there is struggling with something. They're struggling with something. And some are struggling with some big stuff. Some are struggling with addiction. Some may be struggling with, with on the verge of divorce. Some may be struggling financially. Some may be struggling with, uh, with, with children that are, that are having issues. But I can promise you this, no matter what social economic place that families are in, Every family has some kind of a struggle. The realness and rawness, Kevin and Tom, is that we're not allowed to talk about that the way we once used to be able to talk about that. Unfortunately, social media, Facebook, these different places, I mean, people go through a thousand photos to pick out that one photo they're going to post on Facebook. And so it looks like everybody has it together when the reality is, is that we're all struggling with things. And what I'm really going to tell you is that when we, when the family finds out that there are other people facing similar struggles to them, when they're not alone on this journey, all of a sudden they take a deep breath and they can actually say, you know what? I'm not fine right now with my family. In fact, we've got some struggles and we want to roll up our sleeves because as a family, we want to be, do, and have everything that our family was intended to be, do, and have. But right now, like you said, we're not sure where to even begin. And the biggest message that I have for families and that I'm trying to live in my own life is that we weren't put on this earth to be alone. Okay. We weren't supposed to walk this earth alone. And that's why we have husbands and wives. And, and that's why we are couples and we come together and we have children. But the reality is families weren't supposed to be alone. We weren't supposed to be on this journey alone. And, you know, my call out to this community is you're not alone. Okay. Just be the fact that you're listening to this with Kevin, with Tom, with me, you're part of a community that wants to be, do, and have more. And we're not supposed to do this alone and we're not alone. And that's kind of the biggest thing that I want to get raw and say is that families are trying to do it alone. And that's why we're on the back burner. That's why this gets pushed down the list from our health or our finances, because if we, if we realize that we're doing it alone, all of a sudden it gets pretty freaky. It gets pretty scary out there because these decisions we're making for our family, Kevin, they're not about today's business or tomorrow's marketing. They're lifetime. We're making impacts that's going to last a lifetime. Forget lifetime. Tom talks about legacy. Okay. One of the greatest desires that every family I have that I coach they want to leave a legacy. They want their family to mean more than it means in 2017 or 2027. They want to know that their family is, their legacy is going to live on in the future. So they've got these dreams and visions, but the reality is, is when they walk through the door of their home today, all of a sudden it's like, now what? And that's the reality of the situation. 
So Mark, let me let me set this up for you. You know, if we were to all, if if you're driving, don't do this. But if you close your eyes and you look 20 years from now, and you're having the family reunion, and it's the perfect scenario, right? The the kids are there, the grandkids are there, the values, the principles, everything that you believed in and taught, you can see that it's being passed down through the generations. I mean, it's that it's that ultimate vision, and yet. Today, I mean, you used the word. We had a long conversation about this, Mark. You you said that families are messy, and I never forgot that word, messy. So, so if our vision twenty years in the future is this masterpiece, right? This this creation that this that it's not just giving our kids knowledge that they can make decisions with. It's wisdom that they can make choices with, right? It's how they. It's how they grow up and raise their family and their family. How do we, how, how is it, because Ziegler family, the fact that Ziegler is launching Ziegler family to really meet people where they are in the mess of their family. Speak to what that means to move from the messiness of family to where you want to go. Well, number one, you hit the nail on the head. You know, families today are messy. My family is messy. Without a doubt, I'll be the first to raise my hand and say my family's messy. And I'm not talking about my living room or my bedroom. I'm talking about just the fact that we have all of these stimulus and technology and TV and there's 500 channels on cable and there's every kind of social media and there's so much competition for our times. It's a messy time to be a family. But the reality is, is that when I speak to going from messiness to masterpiece, this is the cool part, Tom. I get to go back to your father, okay? Because he talked about stability, going from getting stable to success then to significance. And so the reality is, is that a lot of families, when I ask families right now, what, how would you describe your family? They use the word, I'm surviving. When they start getting raw and real and they're not giving me the fine and great, they use the word survival. And so what survival is, is that they're in the river of life. They're treading water. Nobody's dying, but their head is above water. They're breathing, but they're letting the river of life take them where they want to go. They're not deciding where their family goes. And so we have to move from that survival stage over to a stability stage of saying no more. Okay. I want to take my messy family and I want to create a masterpiece 20 years from now. We've got to stop flowing with the river of life and decide who we're going to be as a family, set some goals for our family, create a mission statement for our family, decide what targets that we're shooting for, because then we can move from stability to success. And once we get in that success place, we can start to then have some of those conversations about significance and what that means for our family. And ultimately we spend the rest of our life in that legacy you know, place as we look to create that masterpiece. And so when I close my eyes and maybe Kevin, you can answer this question too. And I go forward 20 years from now, and I'm sitting there and my children who are teenagers right now have children and they look up at me and they say, you know, grandpa, you want our, our family mission statement is this is our family mission statement. Do you know what the goals that we have for our family this year? Do you know that we are, you know, they, they look up and say, you know, and my son or daughter looks up to me and says, you know what, dad, the key to living is giving. And this is what we're doing to give back as a family. Those are the kind of legacies that I'm trying to put into my kids. And so 20 years from now, if I've done my job, that will be happening to me. But that's not going to happen by accident. I've got to draw a line in the sand and say, enough. And I've got to stop just surviving and start moving towards thriving. And that takes a lot of intentionality, a lot of confidence, and a lot of clarity that a lot of families don't have right now. Hold on, I just paused it. Um, is there, a, is, didn't I see that there's a, fa a private Facebook group for the membership, Ziegler Family? So Ziegler Family, yes, you can go to Facebook. Uh, we have a private membership group on Facebook. You just search Ziegler Family on Facebook and you can join that private Facebook group. But the reality is, is that we're now starting to blog and communicate and we're touching on these tough issues about marriage and about communication. And so the reality is if people go to ZieglerFamily.com and sign up, they'll get connected to the community in that way. And that's probably the better call to action. 
Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to sit in there, but I wanted to mention that. Yeah, ZieglerFamily.com is the best place for them to connect to the Ziegler, the family-focused effort at Zig Ziglar. Okay, I'm going to hit on that. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to take off. Hey, Mark, when you talk about, yeah, legacy there, my oldest kid uh, now is 22. I've got a 21, a 20. And as I hear even the the legacy of Honestly, it's their character. When I hear that, you know, they, they're doing great in school or work or sports, I mean, that, that's great, but that doesn't speak to the character. When I hear testimony from their character, there's nothing that gives me, that, that humbles me more and gives me more gratitude. And, and uh, it's a the testimony of God's mercy. Thank you. I didn't totally screw up as a father, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. But uh, you, when you're talking about this, it's a big deal. And as you were talking about, you mentioned the word community, you know, so many times. Folks, I, I want to draw you again to ZieglerFamily.com. If you do nothing else and just go there, give your email address, get involved. They have so many things that I think gives you the opportunity that we do not have in any other context, whether it's church or work or wherever, to really talk openly with others. There's a private faith. Facebook page. And I have been involved in a lot of different membership sites. And there are things that on one hand, I would think, gosh, that should be happening face to face in your own life. But a lot of people just don't have access to it, or it's uncomfortable. And it's amazing the stuff that comes out and the benefit that is to be had by having a community under an umbrella like this, under Ziegler family, which is under Ziegler, uh, it's tremendous. So again, I just, I can't, I'll, I'll try not to uh, make this a, an entire infomercial. It's really difficult not to, because I want you so badly to go there. Well, hey, on the aspect of just being raw. So here's another one, because I ponder the reality of this, the reality of myself as I'm listening to your message, Mark, and Zig's message, message on, on family. Okay, it's Ziegler. We know we're about positivity, right? However, in this case, I'm positive that more people are tangibly aware of the problems in their family, probably more than they are the desires and the visions that they actually have for their family. And I'm wondering in a very visceral sense, what are some of the primary pain points that we experience uh, when our family is merely surviving? We're merely existing, even worse, obviously, if we're suffering. And I'll give you my context that in the health and wellness industry that I'm so involved in, and I'll put the emphasis on wellness, that we so often see people who have this probably a subconscious uh, reality I call it a myth though that they can let their body go to hell in a handbasket in a sense and yet their brain they can still get great work and creativity out of their out of their brain and we know this is absolutely false whatever's happening with your body is affecting every single part of you and so that's a lot of our message there so here when we have strife in our relationships at home when there's just a void of relationships at home and yada yada how is that I'm, I'm looking for some aspects of how is that affecting our health our work our hope our joy pretty much everything and i mean yet i, I don't think that we tend to conceive of the of the reality of it before mark answers that question i want to thank zip recruiter for sponsoring this episode if you are in the position with your business or company to be hiring do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates Posting your job in one place is not enough to find quality candidates these days. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter already has 9 million resumes you can search through in their database. You can add multiple people to your account to make it the most efficient for your team to find the best hire. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 200 plus job sites including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. ZipRecruiter's handy website shows trending career fields, cities, and searches. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. And if you run into any issues, don't fret. ZipRecruiter's friendly and human support staff are there ready to help. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been featured on Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, The New York Times, TechCrunch, and CBS, and why it's been used by over 1 million businesses. Right now, Ziggler Show listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash free trial. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free trial. 
I couldn't agree more. And I can tell you this, uh, you know, the, the impact that it has is widespread. Like you said, it impacts our health, it impacts our well-being, it impacts our relationships in and outside of our home. And I can tell you that, and I thought maybe you were even going here, so I'll just go here now. And that is the number one challenge. You can probably tell me in the health and wellness what the number one problem that, that families are facing I can tell you right now, of all the families that we're working with, coaching, communicating with, the number one challenge is communications. Families have forgotten how to communicate, or it may not even be forgotten. Times are changing so quickly that, you know, that the way we communicate is evolving so rapidly that we're, we're just challenged to have that meaningful communication. And so what's happened is, is that, you know, moms and dads are struggling to co communicate with the kids and the kids are struggling to communicate with moms and dads. And what it ends up doing is, is it creates this, this real wedge in between the relationship. So it just, it flows down. And so, you know, so we're, we're not communicating. And I know Kevin, you're, you, you've shared openly that you make a real priority about having a, a family dinner, uh, you know, every night as a family. But 50 years ago, that was the norm. It's not the norm today. So families had a family meeting every single day, seven days a week, and it was around the, the family dinner table. That doesn't happen. That's not the reality of today. And so we, we believe that we're communicating when we're texting or we're sending direct messages, but there is nothing that can replace face-to-face -face real communication in a family. And when I start coaching these families, the first thing I usually find out is that they're just simply not communicating. Husband and wife aren't communicating, or kids aren't communicating, or parents just simply don't know how to communicate with their kids, and they're at a loss. And when you have the absence of communication, you have chaos. I mean, that's just, you know, the reality. Put six people in a room that six, speak six different languages, and there's going to be chaos. And that's a lot of what I see in families is six different languages being spoken under one roof, and it's just complete chaos because we've, we've really forgotten how to communicate as a family. And when I start to help families put that one piece back together, because even if it's bad, even if it's hard communication, even if it's difficult challenges that they're facing, at least if they're talking about it they're on the road to a recovery they're on the road to intentionality they're on the road to clarity so that communication seems to be that one thing if we can pick one thing that is really plaguing families today is the ability to really openly rawly and really communicate with each other so I got a question for you, Tom, on that, because I know we have people here. I was just with a family who had a tragedy and, and it came out, you know, about some, some aspects of the, of the family dynamics and the father who was gone a lot. And Mark, I get somewhat of the flavor that your life is like mine. You're self-employed and have some flexibility. We work a lot, but have some flexibility. And yeah, we have dinner seven nights a week, the whole, you know, pretty much the whole crew, everybody who's there. And it's tremendous. Now, Tom, you grew up, and I know that you went through, you know, you're the youngest, but there was a lot of the time with Zig, with your dad, there was not a cell phone, there was not text, there was not email, there was a hard line phone. And uh, when I'm sure when he called it, probably it was your mom that got that call. And uh, he was gone for a lot of days. How did this pan out, this involvement or family meetings in that dynamic? You know, I was I was reading this morning in uh, in my devotional, and, and there's a proverb that or that, that says basically, stop doing evil and then do good. Right? You've got to stop the bad and then start the good. the The thing that I would say, and this is where hope is is so easy to find, is that it, with our family, with Dad, it was intentionality. I mean, we, he traveled all the time, but when he was in town, there was time being made for us to have that uh, conversation. He always made plans to take me to school. I can remember, you know, being seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, and he would adjust his whole schedule to get that 10 minutes in the car where it was just the two of us, right? He wanted that conversation. Later on, as I grew up, it was golf. You know, that was our you know, once a week, twice a week, we would get together on the, on the golf course. And then when we got married, there was still the intentionality of, you know, we're going to spend time together. We're going to invest in this relationship. And today, 
you know, I, I look at today's families and it's more distressing than ever because there are 50 things competing for our time instead of one, you know, or two or three. It's not just you're gone all the time. It's when you get home, your cell phone has your email on it and you can literally be on email until right before you go to bed. So what is it that you're going to do that you're going to stop doing so that you can replace it with the good? Now, here's the amazing news. And, and Mark, I was having like a deja vu flashback because I started to work in the company out of college right in the early 80s. That was pretty close to when Raising Positive Kids and Courtship After Marriage came out, you know, kind of the cornerstone Ziegler family books. Every principle that's in those books worked a thousand years ago, they work today, and they're gonna work a thousand years from now because they are timeless principles. Well, in the raising positive kids messaging that we had in the marketing piece, there was a picture of a young boy, probably four years old, and he's in a living room and he's got a permanent marker and he's writing on the wall. And the caption was, do you see the mess or the masterpiece? And so when you talk about a messy family, Mark, and, and I ask you about masterpiece, that was what was floating in my back of my mind from an early age. And so the first thing that we want to do, in my opinion, with our family is realize we can create a masterpiece and the masterpiece comes out of the mess. It's a masterpiece isn't created because there aren't any messes. The masterpiece is created because we stand on the pile of messes. You know, we, we learn from it, we grow from it. And so as we look at our family and we think, golly, I want the best family I can have. What are some things that I can do intentionally to go to that next level? And that's why I'm loving the seven day family challenge because we you know we, we we are introducing this whole concept with the greatest experts of all and in today's world in this culture that that all of a sudden we we blink an eye and everything's changed but the fact is that there are people who are doing family right every single day and so how do we so mark how do we get to that next step of, of doing that before mark answers thanks to blue apron for sponsoring this show as you've come to know i love this show sponsor because they are about great food incredible home cooking has never been more attainable thanks to blue apron for less than 10 bucks a meal blue apron delivers easy to follow seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients right to your door no more overspending at restaurants or high-end grocery stores with blue apron you can prepare delicious memorable meals yourself in under 40 minutes blue apron has partnered with over 150 local farms fisheries and ranchers across the u.s to ensure that all their ingredients are of the highest quality. And because Blue Apron ships the exact amount of ingredients required, they're reducing food waste. It's delicious quality food that you can feel good about. If you connect with me, Kevin Miller, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Agent K Miller, you'll see pics of my family and me cooking Blue Apron meals. My kids literally now ask, Daddy, when do we get the next Blue Apron meal again? Uh, it's really great. Some of the meals available in March include salmon piccata with orzo and broccoli, pork chops and miso butter with bok choy and marinated apple, vegetable chili and baked sweet potatoes with crispy tortilla strips, spicy shrimp, coconut curry with cabbage and rice. That's all a mouthful, which is the point, yes, pun intended. All right, check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Ziggler. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's, again, blueapron.com slash Ziggler. It's just a better way to cook. Well, here's one thing. In the spirit of getting real, I'm just going to be super vulnerable to you guys. And I'm going to give you a real-life example of what happened to me last night. My son was wanting to start up his aquarium again, and he was so passionate and so excited. I was in another city yesterday all day, left early in the morning, didn't get home till late at night. I was exhausted and tired, and all he wanted to do was share with me all the things he was doing with his aquarium. He hadn't spent any money. He was getting it all going himself. He was so proud of himself. 
And I kept looking at my phone and it, I had some issues that blew up and I was trying to be present in the meetings I was in. So I didn't look at my emails and then I started looking at my emails and next thing you know, I'm texting and I look up at my son and he says, gosh, dad, you must really be busy. And then he just went over to his aquarium and kept going. And I, I literally welled up with tears. I went and put my phone up in my bedroom. I went back downstairs. I apologized to him. And I said, I'm not too busy to hear what you're doing. And I realized that, you know, these, this phone, this, this te technology that we have, the reason I was looking at it is because it was a lot easier to look at the text message of the moment or the email from earlier in the, the day than it was to be all present for my son. It was so much easier to react to that text message, to react to something that's not going to move the needle in my family than it was to truly be present for him. And he needed me to be present. And yet this technology was keeping me from being present for him. And, you know, thank goodness I had the, the strength and the wisdom to put it away and come back and ask for his forgiveness to be present with him and for him to reshare that enthusiasm with me. And so I'm telling you, Tom, that it happens not because it's, it's like I couldn't help but hear what you said. Your father traveled, but he was intentional. He, he, he knew the main thing, and he kept the main thing the main thing, and it mattered. And it mattered to you, and it impacted you. And I think technology keeps us from the main thing. And it's so much easier to look at technology or look at social media or interact with people who aren't in our home than it is to be all present and all intentional for the people who truly matter most for us. And so you talk about what we need to do. Sometimes we just need to take this piece of technology and we need to check it somewhere else. We need to plug it in, put it somewhere where it's going to charge for, for when we need it, but we need to be present and we can't be present while looking at a text message. I promise you that. You can't be present while answering an email and you can't be present while being on the phone. And so I love my technology. I couldn't do my business without it. I couldn't be the father that I am sometimes without it, but sometimes it really keeps me from being the dad my kids need me to be, the husband husband that my wife needs me to be. And we got to be bold enough as, as people in our family to know what is our biggest priority. Is it our cell phone or is it our kid who's telling us about their aquarium? And, you know, and I think too many uh, moms and dads make the mistake that I made last night. Absolutely. And, and folks, as with anything that we have on the Ziggler show, that is anything about Ziggler, the point is to inspire you and to compel you to take action, to start different habits, to actually figure out how to walk this out in your specific, unique life. And to give you ideas as we talk about communication, and Mark's talking about, he, he has a, a, does a lot with fam, weekly family meetings that work so great for them. Yeah, dinner time is something, a, a daily dinner works great for me. I have a good friend, and the commute down to school, it's like 15, 20 miles with all of his kids, is a prime time that he invests with them. Whatever it is, that is the point, is finding out what works for you. Again, I'm going to draw you back to, that's the point of Ziegler Family, is the community, is these ideas, is the place is to figure out how can you make it work for you because your life is unique. We all have similarities, but we have very unique situations. So text, this is what I told you at the beginning. I'm going to call it out real quick here now. Text seven day family. You can use the number or the letter seven day family to this number four, four, two, two, two. All right. You can do it right now. Text seven day family to four, four, two, two, two. If you want to go to the website, go to sevendaychallenge.com. Now the text will give you all that information too, whatever, whatever hits your fancy, sevendaychallenge.com. That is the number seven. You can go to that website. Please don't, uh, you can, I'd rather you didn't listen to the rest of this. If you'll just go there and get involved, give it a chance to see what they're doing and how you can implement this. So my next question for you, or next thing for us to just discuss, when we look at, when I was looking through the Ziggler family info and the Ziegler family, the seven day challenge, you know, my tendency was to say, okay, everything then is going to fall. All the focus is going to fall under either marriage or parenting. But as we talked about earlier, it's almost, it almost feels like a Trinity that there's marriage and there's parenting. And then there's the entity of the family. Now, when I looked on the blog though, I did see blogs from you, from your wife on specific areas of marriage and parenting. So in that sense, is that where a lot of the specific information does fall 
under. So we're going to be, because obviously I can't do family well if I'm not in, well, I was going to say if I'm not in union with my wife, though I'll take that and uh, ask you first, answer that question, but then hit the people who are listening right now who are single parents as well. Because <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to jump in there, Kevin, and tell you that uh, for those listeners who don't know, my wife and I are a blended family, and I did the single dad thing for a good while. And so I was out there doing it myself. I had my kids, and I was doing the very best I can. So for those single dads, single moms out there, um, man, God bless you. And we're here for you as much as we are for any family that's out there because it's all about being intentional. And whether you're a husband and wife or a single dad or single mom, it's about being intentional and it's about being intentional in the areas that matter. And that's why the resources that you're going to get on Ziegler Family, I'm going to tell you right up front, we've touched on a few of them. We're going to talk about relationships, relationships inside your family, relationships with husbands and wives, relationships with kids. And we're going to, we're going to dive right into that. We're going to talk about your physical health. We're going to talk about financial health. We're going to talk about having some work-life balance so that we can, we can be, you know, successful at work, but also bring that home. You know, we're going to talk about communication. That's a big thing because it's such a big deal for families and it's a, a sweet spot that I really believe strongly is, you know, the glue that really holds us together is that, you know, and so, so we're going to touch on all these areas and we're going to touch on all of them because it's about balance. And that's the one thing that I also find when I'm coaching families, Kevin, I find that they're so proud of the fact that maybe they're involved in tons of community activities. And so you could be a 10 on a one to 10 scale in community activities, but if your communication inside the family is a two, your wheel's not going to roll very well. You know, so if you financially are a nine and, but your ability to have your relationships are a three, that's going to be pretty lopsided. And vice versa, if you've got great ability to communicate, but your finances are a two and your physical health is a one, you're going to really struggle. And so one of the big messages that we have at Ziegler Family, and that was the inspiration for the entire seven-day challenge, is that we need balance in our life. And many families that we coach are way out of balance. In fact, I did a marriage uh, retreat, my wife and I did a marriage retreat two weekends ago, and we actually brought the Ziegler wheel of life into the marriage retreat, and we've adapted that to be the family wheel, and we gave people this checkup on the wheel, and afterwards, when the whole marriage retreat was over, they got to actually say one thing they got from all the sessions they went to, and over the half the people brought up our session, and they didn't bring it up because it was us, they brought it up because they said, I never realized how out of balance our family is. It was the first time that they ever looked at themselves as needing balance in their family because sometimes we want to just focus on one area, but it really takes balance as a family for our wheel to travel where we want it to go. And that's why the seven day challenge is seven days. It's seven areas of focus over seven days so that we can find balance and not put all of our effort into one area, which is great, but then we're out of balance and we ultimately can't go where we want to go as a family. Well, and on that, folks, again, this starts March 27th. We really want you to do this with us so that we're doing it literally live all together. It'll be going all over social media, Ziggler email. We'll be talking about it in the shows here. I'll be talking about it even in shows that aren't on this focus. And we want to do it with you then it's seven consecutive days. Uh, you're going to get the emails. You're going to get the videos. You're going to get the challenges. However, realizing, and as I talked with Mark, you know, that the chances of some interruption happening in my own family are high. It's going to be there for you. You're not going to miss it. So if you miss a day, you can come back to it. And folks, if you're listening to this and it's four months after this recording, you can take part in it then. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more happening at that point. So don't let that get in the way. However, I really encourage you to hit the March 27th uh, with us, Tom. Yeah, Kevin and Mark, you know, the, the thought that just popped into my head is that 1%, could you give and invest 1% in your family? And what, what I mean by that is in this, in, in 1% of a day is 14 minutes. 14 minutes is 1% of a day. And in the family challenge, we've got these experts. And how long are the videos in each they're, one? 
they're five to 10 minutes. So the total intro, outro, hit, click, load it is less than 14 minutes. So we're, we're literally asking people to spend less than 1%, less than 1% of their day to take this challenge and then ultimately share it with other families so that they can take the challenge with them. Yep, and our goal is to light the fire because, you know, this is something that we put together. It's a benefit. There's no, you know, there's no investment to be a part of the seven-day challenge. It's, it's something that we wanted to provide for you. And when I just, you know, Dad, he was always, you know, when we would talk about family, and, and I've recalled this conversation many times, he'd be like, son, you know, people will pay thousands of dollars to go to learn how to sell more or speak better or lead an organization. And, and when it comes to the family, it's like there's this hesitation, yet they'll say, well, that's the most important thing in my life. And I think, Mark, maybe the biggest challenge is, is we were missing the boat by not bringing something to the family right where they are. Because when you look at age ranges from, you know, from, from newborn to 18 year old at home and mom and, you know, and all these different things going on, maybe what it is is the time was we got to bring it to the family rather than saying the family needs to come to us. So that's why I know dad is, smiling big time because his question wasn't, Oh, you know, he, he never complained about, you know, the audience is tired or, you know, those, those people aren't really interested. He never even thought that way. What he always thought was, what do I have to do to meet their need? Because if I can meet their need, they're going to respond. And so really for the first time ever, we're bringing this right where families are. Well, and I got to tell you, I, I mentioned this in the very beginning, and there's, there's two things that pop out from every family that we talk to, and that is there is a deep desire to be on this journey with other families who are experiencing the same things as them. And we, that's one of our goals is to just pull together, literally, wouldn't it be awesome if, if 100,000 families would come together and be as real and raw as the three of us have been today, and as this audience is, is listening to this, that we can come together and join this journey journey and really, really change the world around the dinner table and be intentional as families, join a community of families on the same journey. And then here's the other thing. So that's number one is they want to be part of a community and they want to be on this journey with other families who are experiencing what they're experiencing. But the second thing guys is they believe, and I believe, and I found this to be true in every case, that every family has something unique to offer other families. There's something special about every single family. Tom, there's something special about your family that you can uniquely move the needle for other families. Kevin, there are, there are things special about your family that can uniquely move the needle for other families. And I'm here to tell you, I haven't met a family yet that doesn't have something special about them, some reason that their family was created to, and it wasn't just you know, to exist. They didn't, we weren't created to survive. They were created to thrive. And that's the other thing that a community of families does is it gives you a chance for that specialness to move the needle in other families. And we're able to find that, what makes them unique, and then give them a platform to move the needle. And I think that's been the most exciting thing is what I've learned from families, not what I've taught families and what they've learned from me, but I learned from this community of families. And I think that's the secret sauce to Ziegler family is not me. It's not Kevin. It's not Tom. It's the, what other families bring to the equation, their specialness. And I think that's kind of the coolest thing of all. Well, speaking of that collaborative wisdom, in essence, I got to point out again that of the nine primary personalities that are leading this seven-day challenge, five of them we have had as interviewees here on this show. And actually, I'm about to say five and a half because uh, Gary Chapman, uh, who's leading a section there, we've not interviewed, though coming up, we'll be interviewing his a co-author of the five languages of appreciation in the workplace, which comes out of his five languages of uh, love languages of uh, Dr. Paul White. So, I mean, this is a part of the Ziegler family, but I do love the collaborative aspect. Just like you said, Mark, it's not about any one person having it all figured out. So you've mentioned a few times, you know, you talked about actually one of the questions that I was prepared to ask you, but you, I think you've already hit it is say, what are, what are one of the primary things that handicap our family health? And I think you in essence said it's the lack of communication. You mean real communication, not just content. So, 
so it's it's lack of communication and it, it, it goes broadly because I will tell you that the other thing talking about Dr. Chapman uh, and the five love languages, I would say that one of the things that we have also found is that and, and Dr. Chapman talks about this in his challenge. So this is a little spoiler alert, but we all have love tanks. OK, our children have love tanks and he has found over extensive research that when your child's love tank is full, they make good decisions. They emotionally are healthy. They make good emotional decisions. They make good decisions at home. They make good decisions. But when their love tank is empty, they don't make good decisions. In fact, as they get to be a teenager, they go looking to fill that love tank up somewhere else and sometimes in all the wrong places. And so our wives have love tanks. Our, the husbands have love tanks. We all have love tanks. And here's the deal. How do you fill their love tank? By loving them the way they receive love. What is that? That's communications. So that's why I say that communications in a broad sense is really the fabric that really threads this all together. And so it's communications about finance. The number one reason that, that finance is such an issue with families is because they don't talk about it. And so finances can be a really tough thing. Health, physical health. You'll find that if families are talking about their physical health, their physical health is going in the right direction. If they're not talking about it, it's going in the wrong direction. That's why I emphasize communication. But all of these areas are, you know, are really important, but it has to do with our ability to talk about it. And I'm going to go a step further and say one of the issues that we have as parents is that we parent in the dark. You know, we discipline in the dark. We keep everything a secret. And one of the secrets of our success as a family has been putting that communication right out front. If we have a family member that's challenged with something, we bring it right out to the whole family and we talk about it. And it's amazing how much good advice the kids have for their sibling or brother, or it gives them the chance to support them and encourage them. And we've even had to, we, we allow our kids to hold us accountable publicly in front of the whole family as well. And so if we would just start talking about it, I mean, the best thing that a family could do after listening to this is you just go home, call a family meeting and say, we know that we can be, do, and have more as a family. And I just want you to know that it starts today. We're going to start talking about how we can do more. We're going to start talking about why our family even exists. We're going to start talking about, you know, how we came to be and what we can be as a family. And just by having that initial conversation, you'll be shocked at how much everybody wants to talk about their family. And, and as a family. And so communications is key. Filling up that love tank for kids is key. I mean, there, I could go on and on for an entire episode on some of the things that families can do, but it just boils down to just good old fashioned. Okay. You've heard this saying for those sports fans that are out here, I'm going to tell you something. Parenting is a contact sport. Marriage is a contact sport. And what I mean by that is it can't happen. You can't be sitting in the sidelines yelling instructions down on the field. You got to get in the game. You got to get nose to nose. You got to grab the shoulders and get eye to eye, nose to nose. That's when change happens. That's when intentionality happens. That's when good things happen in the family and that you can't do that with a phone. You just can't. You can't do it through a phone. You can't do it through a computer. So remember, Parenting, marriage, family, that, that, that triangular relationship there, it's a contact sport, and it happens eye-to-eye, face-to-face. Well, so on this, we love to give resources with Ziegler, and you know, we were, we we're very prone to, if we're talking about, let's say, sales. We had a recent show on sales that obviously Ziegler has incredible resources, books, audios, more on sales. Is it the end all to all great sales content? Absolutely not. There's great content out there. And so when we give the principles for good sales, if you get it from us, you get it from one of our interviewees, which was the case in our past show. If you get it from somebody else, uh, okay, but we're talking about the principles. So in this, we're talking about the principles and not just pushing this Ziegler family and the seven day challenge alone. However, I will say uh, as unbiasedly as I can, there's just not a lot out there. There's not a lot out there. What is out there is somewhat dated to the day and age that we have. And so when you guys are hearing the premises that Mark is putting out about calling the family to get through with them, I know, the way that I know, and I have friends that are going to fall in this category, they're going to say, you know what, I have the will to do that. I don't know what I would do. That feels really 
uncomfortable. Yeah, I could pull us all into the family dinner that we haven't had in a year because we do it at haphazardly or in front of the TV or whatever. So I hear you. I know I've been convicted about this before. So yeah, I can do it. I don't know where to start. Um, if you're in good company, that's another reason why I would have you join the community and talk with a lot of other people who are like that. One, two is I know that Mark has within this material, there's baby steps. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, Mark. Hey, uh, this is what I want to tell you. So we get these amazing people like, like Dave Ramsey and Dr. Gary Chapman and Tony Dungy, all these awesome people. And you know what we asked them to do in the challenge? Take their entire life's work. Okay, so we're talking about 400 plus years of wisdom in seven speakers, okay? And so seven presentations, all of this wisdom, and we basically said, look, if you're going to, if a family is going to invite you into their living room, into their home, and you've got five to ten minutes with that family, and they've taken the time and the intentionality to invite you in, take your entire life's wisdom, and can you boil it down to one thing? Can you give them one challenge? So in Dr. Gary Chapman's, you know, he's almost 80 years old. So we're talking about, you know, a lifetime of wisdom, boiling it down to one thing. And then we said, after you've given them their one thing, give them one step. So literally, you will get an entire life's wisdom out of an expert in boiled down into one thing, and then you're going to be given one step. And if you will accept that challenge, if you will listen to that wisdom and then accept that challenge and take that one step, I promise you, you will have a week of wins that will start your wheel moving in the right direction, and you'll be able to extend those wins into more wins in your life, and all of a sudden, the entire trajectory of your family will be changed in one week, in seven days. You watch the challenge, you take the challenge, and then you share the challenge, and sit back and watch what happens to your family. And I am doing this. So I literally, as you were talking a minute ago, I have to admit I was multitasking, even though they say that's a myth. And I went and signed up. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to let my crew know, and we'll just do that. We'll make that the dinner. And not everybody will be there every night, but we'll make that the dinner uh, for seven days in a row to go through this. And I really like the idea of it. It's not something I'm pushing down their throat. It's not something I even have to lead but say, look, here's what they sent us. So this is from Dave Ramsey. This is from Gary Chapman. What do you guys think? And let them do that. And I think that'll take the pressure off a lot of folks. Well, so a big question here, just a, 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 um, maybe even somewhat of a, of a wrap up question as we drive people into taking advantage of this and engaging in this is you talk a lot about, uh, when you say the goal with Ziegler families to help families succeed, to help them win. And obviously we all define things differently, but when we look at that, my uh, assumption, Mark, is that when you're talking about that, you're telling, you're telling me there is success and there is a, a what's in it for me, for me out of this, that if, if my family's winning, this is what I, Kevin, am going to get for it. I'm a selfish guy. I want something for me that's not just altruist, altruistic. However, this is also for my kids. What are they going to get? Because I know, well, heck, I know we could all sit here and talk about what we did not get from our parents that we're very aware of today, the things that we're grateful for, the things we wish we got, we had the chance to do that. There's nothing more convicting uh, than that for me in looking at this type of a concept. But just, I guess I want you to flesh out when you talk about helping families seek. I think a lot, of, again, a lot of us have never thought about what family look like. I don't know that we don't fight. What is that? I, I can tell you it's different for every family. Okay, I want to be honest with you there. The, the goal of Ziegler family is to meet families exactly where they are. Okay, whether they're inner city, whether they're in the country, whether they're in a big home, a little home, in an apartment, in a duplex, it does not matter. We want to meet you exactly where you are. And the mission that we have, Kevin, is very simple. We want to help families be more, do more, so that they can have more. And the obvious question that you would ask me is, what is more? And that's the coolest part of this whole journey is that every family gets to sit down and decide what that more is. You see, I believe that when the family was created, when, when a husband and wife or two parents sat down and they talked about having a family, they had dreams. They absolutely had dreams. Every single family I talked to can go back to that point and talk about the dreams they had for their kids, the dreams they had for their marriage, the dreams they had for their family. But along the way, life got in the way. 
you know, family got messy and life got messy and they forgot what those dreams are. And, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, they seem like an impossibility. They seem like a pipe dream. And so next thing you know, they, they're afraid to dream for their family because it hurts too bad to have those dreams. And so the reality is, is that our whole mission, and if you go to ZieglerFamily.com and you see the mission for ZieglerFamily.com or Ziegler Family is to help families be, do, and have more. And the awesome stuff is that they get to sit down as a family and decide what that more is. And when they decide what that more is, we are so loaded with resources to make that more a reality. And if that more is to just have peace, I mean, I sent an email out to our Ziegler family list and said, look, you guys got to know me and my family, but I don't know you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? My inbox has blown up. And I've got people that are talking to me and sharing and, and one mom, you know, and, and keeping things confidential. She just wants some peace. She's got a house full of teenagers and I can relate. I've got six teenagers in my home right now. Six. It's crazy. And so I can understand how one family wants peace. Yet another family is looking for prosperity and another family wants to see kids go to college and another family wants to see them graduate from high school and another family wants to see their kids be healthy because they're plagued with some kind of illness or, or disease. They, they're not even talking about the future. They're talking about the present and another family wants to get through today. And so what I can promise you is this, if you are willing to get on the journey, if you're willing to join the journey, if you're willing to get on the path, you know, that we have set forward and, and we're going to ask you to do something. And that is to sit down and decide what more is for you. Because Kevin, I can't tell you what more is for your family. And Tom, I can't tell you what more is for your family, but I can tell you if you'll sit down and at least decide what more looks like for your family, then Ziegler family will help you be, do, and have what it is that your family was put on this earth to be, do, and have, and what it is that you want to see for your family. So wherever you're at, wherever you want to go, we're here to provide you with resources that help you get to that destination. All right, Mark, when you start one of the videos and you say, or, and I think the intro video, you say, why do some families enjoy being together and others experience nothing but endless drama? That statement right there, I think, gives a lot of us something to chew on. And nobody's perfect. I would say my family's incredible. Do we have drama that's unnecessary sometimes or that could be held? Absolutely. Uh, but in this, too, another big part of this, and I really want to I'll, I'll end us with this, is the idea, and I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to think through it. I, I couldn't multitask that well, but uh, you give the invitation to send this to some other people. What are a handful of families that I want to not only gift this with, but that I selfishly, I want to be with them and I want them to be weller. I want them to be happier. I want them to be more fulfilled and winning so that our families can together, they can feed off that. So as much as I think there's incredible value and an unprecedented value in this online community and this opportunity to do it from wherever you are, that if you can also pinpoint some people in your life, whether it's family, whether it's friends, folks you go to church with, folks you work with, who you think would benefit from this, uh, do it with them. If you think that you're in great shape with your family, then here's your opportunity to give a tangible <coughs> course to somebody and help mentor them along. And uh, yeah, so many opportunities because again, as much as I, I never want to say, hey, we were the only people with this. I just don't know where else this is happening. I don't know. There's stuff on parenting. There's stuff on marriage. Where can I go get a resource? And where can I get one right now that's live that I can actually literally tangibly engage in? It doesn't exist, which is why I am uh, beyond thrilled. And I know that's why Ziggler is putting everything behind this effort. Mark, I'm just grateful for your devotion to this, for your testimony, for your example, and for your humility, and that you're walking through it with us as well. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the call out to share, because I want to tell you something. There's two things that happen. If Number one, challenges are so much more fun to do with other people, and so if you can engage other families to take this challenge with you, A, it'll be a lot more fun, but guess what? Here's the secret sauce again. If you engage other families to do it with you, it becomes so much more sticky. There's so much more accountability to it. There's so much more implementation that comes from it. And we did some research and found, although I'd love for you to share it with everybody, put it, post it on Facebook, share it with your entire friend network. But here's where I'm going to tell you, there's a power in three. 
You guys know that. Everybody knows that there's something magical about three. If you'll at least share this with three people, three other families, if you'll take this challenge, if you'll get on this journey together with three other families, the likelihood that the needle moves in your family, the likelihood that you actually take the challenge, that you accept the challenge, and that you implement the challenge doesn't just go up times three. It goes up a multiple of three. And so it's multiplied by three, not plus three. That's a time sign in between. And that's what we're looking for is that multiplication effect. And so I'm going to say share it with everybody, but at least share it with three. Get three more families to do this challenge with you to join this journey. And I promise you, you'll see the needle move in your family in a way that you'll be smiling for a long time. Well, folks, again, text, if you wanted to get the information easy, quickly, wherever you are, text seven day family. Again, the number, the letter, or spell it out either way, seven day family to 44222. Uh, right now, seven day family, 44222. Text it to that number or go to seven day challenge.com. That's the number, seven day challenge.com. You'll be hearing more about this. If you're connected with me on Facebook or with Ziggler in any way, you'll be seeing us all pushing that out. I'll be putting it out to my friends and family and everybody saying, Hey, let's join together March 27. Let's kick it off. Let's talk about it. Let's get involved and let's go into the community uh, of Ziggler family and, uh, and make it happen and move the needle. As you say, Mark, thanks Tom. Uh, just a gift to be journeying along with you guys. 